Well, 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 you have finally got here. You are listening to the Erskine Music Podcast. Here by popular demand, we discuss life, culture, Christ, and of course, music. These half-hour broadcasts are perfect for a commute, coffee time, chat, or any other gap in your schedule where you want to put great content. So without further ado, let's join the conversation today, already in progress. It's the Erskine Music Show. like the matrix like i got this music going on right here i don't know if i've ever felt like the matrix but maybe like if you slowed this down and like subdivided the music it would be like Ooh, everything is slowed down for me in this world of live streaming what's going on it's the erskine music show i'm so glad that you guys are here today i got an empty seat that's over here for jesus no it, well for jesus but also for my friend jason who's going to be joining i think he's going to be joining he's a pastor I think somebody wanted him for counseling. But anyway, we're going to be talking about leadership today, or I'm going to be talking about leadership today. It's live stream, so you never know what exactly is going to happen. But I've prepared to talk about leadership. Stories of failure. <laughs> Stories where I've gotten things wrong. Stories where I've been a poor leader and then improved over time. Hey, guys, I think this is the best manual for leadership that has ever been written. It is not written as a leadership manual, but you get to see so many examples of leadership spelled out in God's word. I want to use a verse of scripture that comes from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. That's Philippians 1, 6. And uh, there's three quotes that I wanted to use from Tim Keller. And the first quote uh, today from Tim Keller is this quote. The more you see your flaws and sins, the more precious, electrifying, an amazing God's grace appears to you. And so that is the quote that he has in a sort of a compendium of quotes. If you're looking for any of these quotes or access to these quotes, I've put those in the show notes for today. And so be sure to check those things out. But the, the more that we see God's grace, the more that we see and understand our sin, the more electrifying and amazing God's grace appears to us. That is an amazing statement uh, that in reference to our sin, in reference to understanding the scope of God's grace, helps us to understand the largeness and the beauty of who God is. All right, I want to invite to the show my friend Jason. Welcome to the, the show, sir. All right. All right. That's exa exactly. <laughs> so when you guys hear uh, when you guys hear that moniker when it comes on the podcast, all right, back to the show. That's it. That's this man's voice. He is here. Live and in person. Well, first of all, let me say good morning to you. Yeah. <laughs> good morning. Coming in hot. Yeah, coming uh, in hot. That's uh, right. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll get to some leadership quotes, but I'm going over yeah. some devotional thoughts from Tim Keller. And um, the first one appears here on the screen here. The more you see your own flaws and sins, the more precious, electrifying, and amazing God's grace appears to you. I was just freestyling on that for just a little bit. Mm. And uh, if you have any comments that you wanted to make about that, you are certainly... Welcome, sir. I think to jump in at yeah. that level, this is the devotional part of what it is that we're doing. We'll get to our top story, which is us talking about leadership and just sort of how that has looked yeah. in our lives and some of the areas that we failed. I did prep him about the show. Like he knew to, like to come to the show. I, just, I, I, I knew I knew the show was was going to happen, um, but I need to pay attention <laughs> to my calendar a little better uh, about timing. So that's on me. I thought you were counseling somebody. Oh. Like being the leader that you are, <laughs> yeah, I was like, no. he's counseling. Uh, I don't want to bust him there and be no. like, I know you. I know you're trying to help somebody yeah. put their life back together, but uh, we got no. a show that you need to be on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a leadership fail, well, by well, the way. Yeah, but thankfully, uh, no counseling before nine. I have to get my coffee first. Okay, so. <laughs> we can't we can't counsel before nine. Um, I think the Tim Keller's quote. Um, what that reminds me of is something that we say around here quite a bit: is that uh, everybody is is broken. And the only hope you have for restoration and reconciliation is the redemption that Jesus offers. Uh, being able to see 
I was big. He just came out swinging. Like, <laughs> he's like, oh, uh, you know, I'm a little woozy coming to the show. Buy him. Yeah. Uh, being able to um, being able to see um, your brokenness in somebody else, um, I think that's where the highlight of God's grace, uh, because you can see how they struggle. Um, you can see where you struggle as they do, and the grace of God is magnified. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's what I would get from what Keller's saying there. I think that's that's good. Yeah, Keller, and this is kind of our devotional, one of our devotional thoughts for that. I've got three of them. Mm-hmm. But if your God never disagrees with you, you might just be worshiping an idealized version of yourself. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> yep. can't say amen. Say ouch. That's right. Come that's on, right. gospel choir. Where y'all at? And this is uh, time for the gospel choir. So, where do you want to go with this one? I, uh, <laughs> this is a deep well. That 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 one with the idolized version of yourself. Yeah, I think that's dead on. I, yeah. I don't think you. I think he's <laughs> he's spot on. Tim Keller uh, gave us a quote that the quote speaks for itself, it. and there's really nothing else that can be nope. said. Uh, in reference to that. But I, I did want to say that I had a conversation with uh, someone the other day and they didn't like my view of, uh, I'll just make this as general as I possibly can. They didn't like my view of what God says about a certain issue in the Bible. And so they kept using the word you, you. And I kept yeah. thinking to myself, well, in a certain sense, that's correct because I'm the one that's saying it. But yeah. ultimately, I'm referring to the fact that God is the one who says this and he's the one who's authoritative yeah and his voice overshadows my voice and i told them in this conversation i said look if there is a if there was a verse in there that indicated that there was something in my own life my own self that i completely disagreed with then i would have to look at god's word and i'd have to say well god said this and even though i don't like it which is often what i have to do even though i don't like it and like the implications of where this goes i have to say this i have to alter my life and reflect upon this. And so I get challenged all the time. They don't, yeah, the, the, the first doesn't understand that the Bible is the standard and that we're constantly trying to uh, conform our lives into that standard, obviously through the power of the Spirit. But um, there are many times I read the scriptures. I just preach through James. Okay. And James is humiliating. He, he, he <laughs> so, playing around. James is humiliating. He brought the Old uh, Testament and the New Testament in terms of wisdom. Yeah. And, and so anytime you're sitting there looking at the Bible through the lens of the gospel and the lens of your depravity, it's it's always a, a conflicted thing. So I can understand why the person feels that way. The problem is they're, they're giving you too much credit. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're giving me too much credit, right? Because you're actually thinking that I, I can come up with this stuff. And, yeah. All I'm doing is uh, is uh, echoing what God has been working in my own life and in the life of those around me. So uh, you got to get past that. Well, what's funny is that I often turn the conversation into saying, okay, 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 let's, 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 okay, you don't believe what I believe. That's fine. What do you believe? And then when they start laying out a series of beliefs mm-hmm. they have, well, who came up with that? Well, you came up with that. You're obviously giving yourself a lot of credit. You have yeah. become God. And, yeah. and in my estimation, even though I'm not trying to be punchy about stuff, that's a very arrogant thing for me to say. You know what? That book that says what God God's word says is not true. It's not accurate. I'm going to tell you what now is accurate mm. and what is most helpful for you. Yeah. And that's a, it's know, one of the, the issues I have kind of shaky on that. with uh <laughs> But the kind of this, the progressive ideology is this, there's just an arrogance that you just throw all this thousands of years of of wisdom and living in this world just out just out just out with the baby. Oh, it's all gone. It's not to say we that, can do better. Yeah, it's not bro, to say we that, can do better. <laughs> there wasn't things wrong. Fine, we can address things that are wrong, but just to throw everything out because it's not progressive, it's not new. It's just I think is the arrogance of the age. Uh, it, it is it is prideful. Uh, to think that way and and do that. So, all right, let's on this devotional tip this morning. <laughs> We're getting warmed up this yeah. morning. <laughs> uh, this may be helpful for us. The mark of the godly man is he likes to change. The mark of the ga- godly man is that he says, Lord, show me where I should change and I'll do it. Show me where I should obey, even when it's hard and I'll do it. Uh, yeah. 
Obedience is an expression of love for Jesus, isn't it? Jesus yes. says, if you love me, you will <laughs> keep, obey me, keep my commandments, right? And you'll obey me. Um, and if you're going to lead uh, in the way that he leads, if you look at John 15, um, Jesus told, actually grounded your, his argument to obey in his own example of how he obeys the Father. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to love the way he loves, you have to love the way he loves the Father and the Father loves him. If you're going to lead, you have to lead the same way that he um, has led and obeyed his Father um, and, and called his life to take up his cross and die for sinners. So um, that's obedience has to be the mark. I think one of the strongest marks of a leader, if you can't obey yourself, how in the world can you get others to, to yeah. follow that example? I remember way back, way back in the day, and I said, I said this last night, I was speaking to the youth group at the church, uh, and I was saying, hey guys, I'm excited to be here, thank you guys so much. I've been going around the country tormenting youth groups, and uh, I'll have the opportunity to go around the country tormenting college students uh, in, the, in the spring, just sharing with them what God's word says, and I don't give you a pass because I don't give myself a pass on this mm. whole thing. And one of the things that I remember back back way back in my days when I was actually on staff at a church uh, in student ministry is that I would often change things. Like we were always changing things. Like you, you like to change things a lot. And I was like, well, I do change things a lot. It's part of that creative myth. But there's also a certain part of me that's like, I'm not going to try to grow satisfied in where it is that I'm at and like put down stakes and be like, okay, this I'm good enough. I'm as good as I need to be mm. in order to, to follow the Lord. There's always, you know, as we're working out our salvation with fear and trembling more than I'm saying, okay, that's an area that needs to change. And even today I'm like, uh, there's a couple of things that I need to do a little bit better. I'm not going to be certainly not going to be uh, auditioning for dad of the year. So that whole perpetual change. You know, uh, I've known you for 20 years and, uh, I would say that, uh, you have tempered, um, well, you have a, a lot of energy, um, <laughs> that's, but that's one, that's one way to say it. <laughs> but I, I think these that, are ways that you can talk to your friends. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and this is like live stream right now. So yeah. if you have a friend and it's like a touchy situation, tell them, <laughs> you know, you've got a lot of energy. Just no. basically means you're really rotten center. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I I've seen the work of grace in your life. For you, um, <laughs> he's definitely a pastor. <laughs> you have uh, you have tempered so well uh, because you've not been afraid to to look in and see that stuff and be willing, hey, look, I gotta, I gotta make a, a change here. I've got to do something. Um, I've actually heard you verbalize like, hey, I'm working on this. Mm-hmm. I see this. I'm working on this. Um, and as a friend, it's helped me out because now I know not only how to pray, but how to help. And uh sure. there's not a lot of people who are willing to vocalize things they're working on, like real things. Mm. So that's well. that's good. That's wise. That's good. Listen, guys, if I'm coming to a university or to a school near you or I'm speaking to students or I'm speaking to adults, it doesn't make any difference. I'm not going to take it easy on you because <laughs> I don't take it easy on me. Nope. That's all you need to know about this bad boy. So that's Tim Keller. We're going to get to some uh, leadership things from somebody that we both really appreciate, yep. Tony Dungy. And uh, that's going to be our top story for today. So here we go. All right, so we got some leadership lessons that we can live by, and uh, <laughs> there's a guy by the name of Tony Dungy, who you and I have both read, and we've admired mm-hmm. him, and just sort of talk a little bit about how you come to appreciate Tony Dungy. I, we- I read why. his... Yeah, yeah. I, he's- well, that certainly gives a sense of why people enjoy this show. Very engaging, very heartfelt. We will return to the conversation in a few moments, but first, let's thank our sponsors and you for all your awesome support. Moody Radio's Dawn and Steve Morning Show, Life Action Ministries, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and Holt International. Thanks so much to our partners who make such a difference. All right, let's get back to the show. This is where it gets good. Probably my favorite football coach um, of all time. I read his book, Quiet Strength, and um, I appreciated his candor and uh, his faith. Uh, he, he reminded me that you can be an NFL football coach and be very genuine, um, in your love for Jesus. I also watched, 
his life and then I watched through his book as I got to know him through his book, uh, the things that he had to tackle personally uh, with his children and how um, with this really sweet, um, wise, uh, good way of dealing with his, his family and, and the priority he put on his family, I just really admired the man. And then you hear the commentary from his players and how much they admired him um, as a man. It all it all fits like everything is consistent. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, I like it when a man's life is consistent. I can follow that. <laughs> so yeah. uh, so I began to just look at him and study him. I'm, I'm currently actually reading his uh, mentoring um, as leading book right now. I just saw that. Yeah, I was looking through some of his works this morning. And yeah, I was like oh, he's got some books. That I yeah, read. yeah, and and he's he's just he's just good. He's He's very applicable, um, tangible, tangible things you can do right now to just be a better, not only a better person, just a better leader among the people you're with. And and so I would highly, highly recommend that you read anything that Tony puts out um, because he is uh, he's credible for starters. There's I haven't found any demons in his closet that would discredit him. Um, he's truthful. He's truthful about his own weaknesses. He'll, he'll be honest about those. And um, he will give you really good practical advice, mm -hmm. uh, really helpful stuff. Yeah, just a great. I would, I would. It would be a highlight of my life to meet him and shake hands with him. Yeah, let's do this. We want to do it. One Tony Dungy quote. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about that in the context of things that we have failed in leadership or maybe succeeded in leadership. However, you want to go with that. Then we'll get a little bit of Erskine music, and then we'll come back and we'll finish with a quote, and then we'll be out. Yeah. So I, I want to be respectful of your time. So I'll give you a little bit of an outline there. All right, so the first quote that I wanted to use is one that uh, he says, the secret to success is good leadership. And good leadership is all about making the lives of your team members or workers better. It's the it's the concept of I'm successful the most when you're the most successful. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he exhibits that. And that's, that's, that is uh, easy to say, but hard to do. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a counterintuitive <laughs> yeah. word that he has just given there yeah. because, you know, we we mark success yeah. based on, well, you're higher than or you're lower than and yep. you've been able to achieve yep. when, in fact, Tony Dungy is saying, if you can pull others up to a measure of success, then you're actually achieving. Right. And I think that that's actually more of a biblical standard, a Absol godly, absolutely. godly standard than the sort of pecking order way that we go about looking at things. That's that that leadership, that servant leadership. And if you look at the life of Christ, mm. the disciples, that was his whole goal. Uh, and as you look at Christianity, the whole idea of, of Christianity is to be conformed into the image of the Son. Mm -hmm. So he's constantly working to make you better. Um, he's constantly working to make you more like him. And if you were to take those principles and apply them, uh, that means you're going to have to slay your pride and you're going to have to slay your ideas of what it means to be. Um, you're you're going to have to get rid of the world's scaffolding, if you will, of success and leadership, uh, because that's going to break. The moment you put the weight of this kind of idea that that I'm the most successful when I make you the most successful, um, that is uh, that's going to crush this this kind of arrogance that's out there that. Uh, I need to get mine. I need to be at the center of attention. I need to be up there. And so, and again, if you just look at Tony Dungy's life and you look at his, even his demeanor, just watch him on uh, TV. Um, he's, he's just not the guy who's going to grab all the attention, but yet when he speaks, they all listen. Yeah. So, so, you know, this, this is one of those areas where I feel like, you know, for a lot of artists, music artists that are out there, the whole idea that you're successful when you're successful um, is one that, the world just lies to you. There are lies that you believe uh, mm. in all of our hearts. There's lies that we believe in. You know, even when I moved to Nashville about 10 years ago, the, the, the belief that I'm successful when I'm successful and I can tell you how successful that I am mm. or I can show you how successful I am or I feel the need to qualify to you how successful I am based on what it is that I've done. And that shift in thinking has really, what that, that, that did for me is it, it began to expose, and I, and I say this, humbly. It exposed weak leadership to me. It exposed bad direction. It exposed um, foolish thinking. It exposed a lot of different things that I look at in the music and even Christian music industry. Mm -hmm. If I can go ahead and say it like that. Mm -hmm. And I go, that's just foolish thinking. Yeah. The fact that there's only about 15 to 20 artists that you ever hear on the radio, because those are the ones the record labels put up, is to 
un- not understand the the immense amount of artists that are out there who have incredible value. I was at uh, what school was that that I was at yesterday? F- uh, Faith uh, uh, <laughs> Faith Baptist Academy. Faith Baptist Academy, middle of a cornfield, um, and not very many students that are there. Old building. Old building, <laughs> old school. Just yep. think, we went back to the 1960s. I'll go back a little further. Okay, <laughs> well, that's further. as far as I wanted to go back yeah. <laughs> today. Yeah. But uh, man, those students were just so encouraged. Yeah. Uh, spending time with them yesterday and just being able to see their faces and you know hear hear just a little bit about you know what their their lives are. And one little girl was just like, "Hey, you know, is this, you know." This is you on this this card that you gave me. Yeah, this is, this is me. Okay, all right. So, any of the, none of that stuff, but just thinking about the fact that for a lot of people, when you're in their presence, um, it really does make a difference. Like they don't even know who Brandon mm-hmm. Lake is. They don't mm-hmm. even know who uh, you know. A lot of the folks that I that I listen to, they don't even know who those artists are. But you're there with them, and there's proximity, and there's an opportunity to mm-hmm. make an impact. And you, you know, if you have two thousand artists that are thinking that way, and they're going to all the respective places that they can go. That's a lot better return on investment than saying, okay, we're going to be artists and they're going to do these massive events. People aren't going to really know who they are. They're not going to be able to get close to them, but we're going to give the image yeah. that this is Christianity because of the some of the ways that they sing songs and put lights around it. I don't know. That's just that's well, kind of my take. Is just like there has to be more than just individuals. There has to be teams that are being built and people that are being built yeah. up. And so this really helped me turn a corner and see if it's just one person that's being built up, that's that's nonsense. I what I, one thing is I've, I've enjoyed about your ministry when you moved to Nashville was just this idea that uh, one you're going to keep things Christ centered, but you're going to keep things ministry minded. Mm-hmm. You, you're always looking at the 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 ministry and and how we're going to advance the kingdom of God. I got exposed to a bit of the machine of the Christian music industry when. I was in a, a community in Minnesota, and they were trying to get Third Day to come do a concert there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and essentially, the machine said no, <laughs> unless you're going to pay this outrageous amount of money. Yeah, it's uh, too small, man. You're too small. You're, you're too, you, small. You too little. Yeah. You're too little. And you're looking at the church, and you're like, you're like, man, these these people be encouraged. This is what you're doing. And I have no idea if uh, if Third Day had a ministry mindset or not. What I do know is they were trapped inside of this agreement. Yeah, they probably and, did. And they, they probably wanted to come. They would have gone, right. except they, they looked can't. at that contract and being right. like, yep. yeah, feed so the fam. It's not about, it wasn't about <clears throat> making others better or more successful. It becomes about making money. And uh, yeah, but that's a, another conversation. Another conversation for another, another conversation day. Another conversation day. But here's a good conversation. This is uh, Christmas is Every Day, a poem that I did set to some music years ago that has actually turned into a rap song. I may actually do it today. I need to do the song. I need to do the rap song today. You should rap. You should flow. Well, you probably already know that when you hear that sound, there's music on the way. After all, this is kind of a music show. Sit back and enjoy. All the music can be easily found on your favorite digital distribution channels. About the birth of a king he was holy but born by the most humble of means yeah it could have been anywhere a palace like alice or even a mountain at the top but god's wisdom unveiled in a lowly stable feeding trough peculiar maybe but father knows best about the plan that saved me because we were all desperate for answers to life's greatest disaster god holy man becomes a rebel Falling victim to lies and all the schemes of the devil But let me swivel to this God The judge, the sovereign and creator He redirects the punishment to the one born in the manger But don't tell me you haven't heard of stranger things Unique rings, a chorus played out on biblical strings That Christ was born to live and born to die God's remedy for sin and that shouldn't surprise This practical application of prophetic information That's why I'm pacing so you don't think I'm wasting your time Because time waits for no man Oh man, oh well Let's bow down before Emmanuel I'm not ashamed to say that Christmas is every day 
candy canes and crosses and I don't care what the world says because when they talk they don't talk by the spirit and when they walk they don't walk by the spirit so let me draw the curtain because I'm certain that most people know that Christmas is more than a day in the year check that some still know right wreck that we all need to hear that he's the reason for the season so forget the cultural commentary that makes gift giving primary and see the burden for this child born by Joseph and Mary. Forgive me if you think this flow is quite contrary, but the book of Hebrews says that neglect is scary. White flag surrender, no more pretenders. Jesus came into the world to save the guilty sinner. Trust Jesus today and every day. Christmas is every day. All right, we're back. Top story today is we're talking about leadership, some leadership fails, some leadership successes. Here we go. Tony Dungy says, you may not win the Super Bowl. Your kids may not go to be doctors and lawyers and everything may not go perfectly. That doesn't mean that it was a bad plan or the wrong thing. Just like a football season, everything's not going to go perfect. Good quote. I want to kind of get a little punchy on this one. Mm -hmm. Your comments are welcome. Any stories that you have about leadership, any ideas that you have, any amens, any disagreements that you have, just type those on the screen. It helps the algorithm, lets people know that you're enjoying this conversation and you like more of this sort of thing. We want to flood the internet. We want to flood social media with things that are encouraging, positive, challenging for folks. And so you getting on there and even making a couple of comments lets people know, hey, there's something going on over there that's of value. And uh, that's kind of how this internet world and space works. I'll get a little bit punchy with this, but let me just get your first thoughts on that. You've coached football before. You've coached football in Texas before. You've coached football even this year in Litchfield, Illinois. Yep. As, as a football coach, everything doesn't go perfect, does it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you have all kinds of things, like <laughs> assignments being missed. And yes, yes. And things you've repped. A hundred times in practice, all of a sudden leave. Yes, we uh, forgot. We've never done this before. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Uh, frustrations can get high. And um, yeah, absolutely. Um, it uh, You have to be very patient with the process. And you have to believe in the process. And, and part of understanding the process is understanding that uh, there's mountain and valleys. There are things that are going to break. There are things that's not going to work. There are going to be things that you thought were going to work that should have worked maybe, but just, and maybe in other situations will work, but with this particular game, with this particular uh, circumstance, this is not going to be applicable. Um, you know, Mike, Mike uh, Leach just passed away. The yes. Mississippi state coach. Condolences um, to his family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I, I really appreciated about him uh, is the way he approached uh, these, these situations and he developed his offensive philosophy around this idea that what what works one game doesn't work another game and um and he had all these arrows in his quiver to deal with that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and um and so even though you might have a bad plan or you might have something that's not working uh these contingencies he would have um one of the things in particular that stood out to me was uh, i think he was playing usc in a, in a bowl um and I, th I think he was with uh mississippi state when, when they wanted it's either them or the cougars but um, this guy is known for throwing the ball all over the place. And USC got so aggressive um, that uh, he went to the shovel pass and just like smoked him up. And that was Mike Leach cooperating from a game plan, but realizing that, hey, uh, things are, gonna, are not going to go well. You got to change it up and you got to be able to adapt. Mm -hmm. And so um, he, he was somebody uh, as a football coach. He was he was somebody who embodied this kind of idea of. Um, yeah, I'm just curious what you're punchy about with this. Well, there's a couple of layers to this. One, from the organizational standpoint level, um, I think you have to lie in order to get jobs these days. You, imagine going into a general manager, um, a team, and saying, um, we may not win the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> <laughs> we may not win the Super Bowl, but I tell you what, we're going to develop character. We're going to develop some integrity. We're going to develop a system here. We're going to develop a plan. 
most people are like, no, that's not what we want to hear. We're going to hire the next guy. We're going to hire the guy that's like, we're going to come yeah. in. We're going to we're gonna run rough shot over everybody. We're going to get all the bad players out, bring all the good players in, and we're going to win the Super Bowl this next year. Like, I think that there's this mentality in the world that, like, if it's not – if I don't win a Grammy, if I don't win, then what are we even trying to do here? And, like, we don't see incrementalism as being that important. So even at the House Church Nashville, what we say is worship Jesus, think small. Like, the next small – but important thing that God calls you to do is the most important thing that you can do. And so we're not going to win the city of Nashville by coming out and saying, you know what, our goal is this year we're going to have 5,000 people. We're going to be in the stadium. We're going to you know, do all these different things. No, we're going we're gonna to wave to our neighbor. We're going to actually do something kind to the people that are around us. Uh, and that's that's the win. That is the Super Bowl for us. But it's a small thing. And you keep laying those foundations. So there's there's just a little bit of that from the organizational standpoint. But I was thinking to myself, Tony, don't you cannot be woke because in our generation, in our day that we live in now, like everybody should have all of the same things. And so when he's saying that your kids may not be a doctor, they may not be a lawyer. What you know, tell me that my kid can't be a doctor or can't be a lawyer. They may not. That's a lie from the devil. <laughs> you want to know the greatest one of the greatest lies they told us when we were kids? Come on, share it with the people. You can be anything you want to be. You can be anything you want to be. That was one of the greatest lies that was ever told. I don't think it was intentional. I think the motive behind it was, hey, to inspire you to reach for the stars and all that. It just wasn't true. Mm. It just wasn't true. Well, I think that as a modification, they probably should have said, work as hard as you can, and then what you want to be will be revealed, and then you can try to achieve being that. But I think putting people into categories and saying, oh, man, you want to be a doctor? You want to be a lawyer? Well, the other one was more catchy. A, yeah, yeah. A, a nuclear <laughs> physicist. I know you don't do your homework and yeah. you don't like math and you're not very good you at science. You hate math. You hate, you hate science. But, but you, you want to be a nuclear yeah. physicist if you, you want to. If you want to be. If you just set your mind to it. Yeah. I, I could set my mind all day long to calculus. Mm. Ain't going to happen. I'm not a calc guy. I can set my mind all day long. Not a calc or trick guy. That's right. I, I can I can even set my mind. This is why this I think I'll probably get some stats in pre-algebra though. Come on. This whole idea of identifying with things, like you know, I want to identify. Just it's just so odd because it's it's like an extension of what we were told as kids. You can be whatever you want to be, except it's just worse. It's just like, well, since I realize I can't be that, I'm just going to identify as that. Mm. <laughs> Now you're getting punchy. <laughs> we weren't going there today, yeah. but you just put that out there just, on live stream. Hey, so I'm now a, we got to deal with that. I'm a big, like, living the truth, dying a lie. That's why I tell my kids Ooh, all the time. living the truth, dying a lie. The truth That's right. Come on. Living the truth, John dying a lie. And if you live in the truth, you can operate with this world, because God has wired it this way, a wise way to live. Um, and what I mean wise is it's not just moral wisdom. It's practical wisdom, too. Um, he's given us creation to explore um and and to use and to tame and to, to build and do all kinds of things uh -huh. and he's given us people uh who are great at at being engineers and who can and mine the earth and do different things i'm not that guy yeah. <laughs> i'm not i'm not that guy he's gifted me in a different way he's, they're archaeologists bro yeah. they're like go out in the, in the the dirt man and just be like with a toothbrush uh, like all day long like that's oh, right man this is inspiring and, to me and that inspires him, and I'm excited they're inspired about that because I'll read about their archaeological yep. finds, and I'm like, man, I'm God bless them yep. for the work they did. Yep. You can find me in the dirt all day with a toothbrush, trying to find um, and little here, sticks from so Native you wanna, Americans. You want to tie it back to to leadership, though, but this is where it's important for fathers to lead the home and study their children, mm. and and be able to have a conversation with That's them. That's good. That's good. Right? If my if my <laughs> my daughter is in college right now. Doesn't like math, doesn't want to do math, and and uh, she wanted to come talk to me about the medical field and some other things. I said, "Hey, on a social level, you could totally do it. You love people, you serve people, and I and I mean like you are you are generally caring about people. So on that level, I can see you doing it. The problem is all that math and science, and you don't like it, and and you struggle with it. Are you sure you want to?" go that direction and then tackle that hill. Yeah. Right. And, and then she comes to the conclusion that no, I'm not that committed to it. You know what she did instead? I'm going to serve children. I'm going to be a teacher. Okay. So heck yeah. So now as her daddy, I'm like, that's spot on. Uh, Cause you are bright and you are 
gifted and you can now both things can, can work and, and you know what she's doing and if you're watching this you should be studying for finals instead that's right that's right <laughs> don't watch uh, this until after you study for your finals. so now that she's heading that direction you know with the with the help of her daddy and her mom and uh, her church people like sonny and audra and these guys they said Look, that's a really good fit for you and and you're not and you're still reaching for the stars because you know what that means because now you could be like that educator that mm -hmm. person who goes the distance in education because you had people speak in your life um, and, and study you and know you. And so I just, I steered away from that whole idea that you can be everything you want to be. Um, and, uh, and, uh, knowing that, you know, I'm trying to get back to Dungey's quote, I guess, but, um, that, he says it doesn't mean that it was a bad plan or wrong thing. Well, I think it is if you're shooting with this idea that you can be anything you want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a bad idea. Um, um, I think you need to be wise and reasonable and maybe, maybe I'm being, um, too pessimistic with it. I don't know. Uh, maybe you're elitist. I don't know. Maybe you're just white. Ali you know, white. <laughs> I'm elitist. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. know, you've always had these opportunities that have been given to you. And yes. We knew Katie barred the doors and, you know, like hidden figures and stuff like they could have done the work, but then they wouldn't put them in the separate but equal kind of category. We're not trying to jump off the bridge on hey, all of let's, that. Let's go there. <laughs> That's what, that's where I was gonna get a little bit punchy. You got we got a whole weekend show that we can do yeah. that sort of thing on. That's what, that's kind of one of the ways that we try to in, encourage and inspire the church. And so, by the way, if you didn't know that we have a weekend show, we have a weekend show that we do. Normally, we're in two different locations, but we're in the same location, and uh, it's called the Way Forward. So check that out. It's a derivative of, of this show, and uh, we just happen to be fortunate enough to be uh, in the same building <laughs> this this week. And uh, yeah, so these are important things to us because they allow us to be able to look and kind of peel back some of the layers of our cultural conversation along with experiences that we've seen. And so that was, mm -hmm. you know, relatively the same age and have grown up uh, maybe in different parts of the country, but same messaging, like mm -hmm. you can be and do anything that you want to do. And um, so some of that is extremely, I think it's, it's helpful to at least open up the possibilities of thinking about what you could do without having doors that are closed uh, at the beginning but then as you begin to gain more experience, you begin to figure out what you want to do. And yeah, and, and good leadership is both having somebody speak into your life and then letting somebody speak into your life. Um, and, mm, and so, that's good. That's good. See, now we, we, we talked about some things, kind of put us on the edge there. But then that, that, that was right. able to bring about something that I think is vitally helpful for people. Right. right. You have to be able to uh, to be able to listen. And, um, and, I, and I just want to call those dads out there who are watching, uh, invite yourself, plant yourself, invade your kid's life <laughs> and mm -hmm. let them know that, uh, that you have been praying for them. You're wisely thinking about them. You're studying them. Um, and, and you want to, to, of course we want them to be successful and we want to do, and, and then like you said, they may not be doctors or lawyers. That's okay. Uh, yeah. but you may, you're going to be what God has gifted you and called you to be because, I'm I'm helping you ex explore that. Yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. th yeah, that and that's kind of where I wanted to land the, the plane today is just to say that a good leader will draw that out. I want to give a quick shout out to Mr. Harold. I don't even know if I don't even know if he's still alive. But Mr. Harold, if you're still alive and you're watching this, or anybody that knows Mr. Harold, who was my high school physics teacher, I was in honors physics, and I didn't. I mean, I didn't think that I could do the work. But you were in honors physics. I was in honors physics and honors biology. I was in well, honors. You were, you were in honors everything. <laughs> I was in honors everything. Hey, do you what? This is <laughs> listen to me. This would be a conversation for another time. Uh, I I barely got out of high school with a two point oh. Barely <laughs> got out of high school with a two point oh. Well, here's the deal. Here's the reason why I'm giving a shout out because this is a leadership thing. This is Mr. Harold is looking at me and I was like, man, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I can do honors physics. He's like, well, you know, are you willing to try? And I'm like, sure. We do the work. Okay. Will you cut? And I would go in early. Will you go in early and do the work? Will you sit with me? Will you listen? And that's that part of being teachable yeah. that I think he really appreciated is the fact that I'm yeah. saying, okay, I'm humble enough to recognize this might be a difficulty and a struggle, but I'm willing to try. And he was able to bring that out of me and make sure that you know, that's good. I understood everything that I needed to understand. And that when the tests were given me, there was no modification to the test. I had to do the, all the work that everybody else yeah. had to do, but he invested so much around me that that it began giving me confidence. You know what? I can be in honors classes. I can do this work. Yeah. I can sit alongside these students. I can carry my Bible to class. And <laughs> what y'all want to say to me? I'm in all honors class. <laughs> I, I in football we call that coachable. I'm sure basketball the same thing, yeah. right? If you have a, you could have a, a subpar athlete, 
who's who's average and turn him into a, a really great player uh, if he's coachable mm-hmm. or she's coachable. Uh, just just being willing to be taught and willing to to put it out there and work hard and learn can and can be that. Um, we we had we've had athletes on our football team that were uh, decent athletes. They're 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 out there. They had a good they had a great work ethic, and they're coachable. Um, really have a good season. Do do good things. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I, I mm-hmm. think that's that's absolutely superb. I was um, I was likable, uh, but I don't think I was teachable in high school. Uh, and I think it that's happens. what that's what uh, the teachers love me to death. And they always thought I was underperforming. Miss Erickson. Um, we give a shout out to Miss Erickson. <laughs> some leaders in our lives. Uh, was my um, uh, literature, one of my liter- literature English writing teachers. Uh, and and she is one of those people who um, just, I, mean, I remember I came and I took the ACT. I didn't do very well in the ACT. And and she just looked at me, what are you doing? Like, what, why, are you, why are you, you, you should be blowing this thing on the water. I know you. Like, I've, mm. I've, I've taught you for several years and and this is not indicative of of uh who you are and so i i came to blossom a little bit later in college uh but not in high school but miss erickson was somebody who who was that kind of person to you she's like you need to come in and talk to me you need to sit down yeah um you can articulate you can write you're just not applying yourself and i think um, a good leader can see things in people mm-hmm. that will help them to flourish in a particular area that's like mm-hmm. a good coach does it's like okay you're not a running back but you might be a good wide receiver yeah. you're not you know, quarterback, well, hey, you might work well at this position and just putting people in places and giving them the possibilities of what it is that they can do. And I think there's a lot from Tony Dungy and coaches that we we have gleaned ourselves that have helped us to understand um, some of these lessons in leadership. Well, going back to Mike Leach, he's of that era who said, look, I don't just just give me an athlete. Just give me somebody who, who wants to play football. I'll put them somewhere. And we'll figure it out. I think that's a great coaching philosophy. Mm-hmm. You know, just give me somebody who wants to play, who's willing to get out there and work hard. They don't have to be a quarterback. If, uh, if they're willing to put on any, uh, it takes 11 guys to play the game at one given time. If you're willing to be one of those 11, doesn't matter where you are, I can put you somewhere and I can do something with that. I think mm-hmm. that's uh, that's good leadership. We can build a team. We can All build right. a team. We have come to the end of this episode. Don't miss a final word from Erskine. Hey guys, tell your friends about this show. And as always, I look forward to your interactions. Please contact us as you are able. We love to hear from you. Okay, friends, let's go and make a difference.